Hello everybody! Another week, another tutorial, another three-year-old question that I've never gotten around to answering until today. So this comment was left under a weight distribution video that I did. It was talking about, you know, where do you put your weight in the foot? Some people say, like, evenly distributed. Some teachers say, you know, all of the weight in the ball of the foot. And then some people say, no, you have to put your heels down. And like, all of these things are kind of true, so I tried to explain it, um, but then we have a very, a very long detailed question with a lot of different points that I gotta try to uh, cover, so I might actually need to take notes. Can you please do a video about the distribution of weight in the Russian technique, of course, on one foot at the bar? This is the problem. All teachers ask for the weight to be in the ball of the foot, hips level, pull up out of the standing hip. This is 100% physically impossible as it is against the laws of the universe concerning the center of gravity. If your standing leg is fully turned out and all the weight is on the ball of the foot, and if the hips must be perfectly horizontal, the body must shift way over towards the standing side in order to center the body weight over the ball of the foot. Yes, this is true. This creates a serious amount of angle in the standing leg, which makes it look like you're sitting on your hip when you're not. I have been compensating by putting part of the weight in the heel and lifting my hip a couple inches on the working side. This feels stable. It looks good. I stay put when I let go of the bar and every teacher has been satisfied with it. However, when in this position, I am breaking every rule I have ever been taught. I would love to hear your thoughts. Wow, a lot of things to cover. <laughs> so let's go through this comment piece by piece verbally and then I'll start to demonstrate and give examples. So. All teachers ask for all of the weight in the ball of the foot, hips level, pull up out of the standing hip. This is 100% physically impossible to do. It is against the laws of the universe concerning the center of gravity. Um, it is not against the laws of the universe um, because your, your next sentence kind of explains how that's possible. You said if your standing leg is fully turned out and all the weight is on the ball of the foot and the hips are perfectly horizontal, then the body must shift away towards the standing side in order to center the body weight over the ball of the foot. Yes, this is true. You must do that. You must shift your weight. If you're doing something on one leg, and your weight is in the ball of your foot because remember a, a lot of the times when we do things in ballet when we do it at the bar uh, we're preparing to do it in center when we do it on flat we're preparing to do it on releve so most things that you do whether it's at the bar or in the center most things that you do you should be able to also do it in releve and yes of course your weight must be over the ball of your foot if you're going to go up into releve but even if you are not in releve there is a shift there there is a 100 a shift and it is correct that you are feeling that the the trick is to disguise it and kind of make that shift invisible and i'll talk about that more in, in a little bit. It creates a serious amount of angle in the standing leg, which makes it look like you are sitting in your hip when you're not. Okay, so um, I mentioned this a little bit in my single leg balance video. There are ways to lift up out of the hip, and a lot of this comes from like the butt and the turnout and that, that feeling of the hips lifting up, so we'll get into that. And I have been compensating by putting part of the weight in my heel and lifting my hip a couple of inches on the working side. This feels stable, it looks good, I stay put when I let go of the bar, and every teacher has been satisfied with it. However, when in this position, I am breaking every rule I have ever been taught. Um, it depends on what you're doing. There are some things in the Vaganova method that do allow lifting of the hip. Uh, basically, anytime the leg goes above 90 degrees, you're allowed to tilt the pelvis. The Vaganova method does allow a, a pivot of the hips, a tilt of the hips, if the leg is going above 90 degrees. There are other methods that don't allow that. You want to try to keep your hips level, even if your leg is 
you know, trying to get up above 90 degrees. But some of these things depend on your anatomy. You know, if you have a, a low acetabulum, you, you're never going to be able to keep your hips level and raise your leg above 90 degrees. Sometimes you have to pivot the hips or lift the working hip. I think your instincts are good. You know, I, I don't think you're breaking rules. I think your instincts are good. Ballet is a lot of minor adjustments to achieve the strongest, most stable feeling. So let's get into it a little more. Uh, I actually took notes. Um, but the first thing I want to establish is that there is nothing special happening at the bar that doesn't happen in the center. Everything I say about weight distribution in the center applies to when you're working at the bar, and everything that I talk about here, weight distribution at the bar, also applies to the center. There, there, I don't want there to be a, a disconnect. There's nothing special about the bar. Whenever you're at the bar, you are essentially preparing for center. You know, the bar is just there to check your balance, to lightly use as a little bit of a support. You're not leaning on the bar, you're not relying on the bar. So nothing should change between bar and center in terms of what you're doing with your placement. So now that I got that out of the way, let's go through this comment bit by bit. So if your standing leg is turned out and your weight is in the ball of the foot, you must shift over to the standing side to put the weight over the ball of your foot. Yes, that is 100% correct. You must. You must do that. You must shift slightly. This creates an angle in the leg and it looks like sitting in the hip. Well, okay. I just made a video about single leg balance and a lot of the things that I talk about in there will also apply here. If you're doing something on a single leg, how do we keep the hips even? How do we prevent all the the tilting and sitting and stuff like that. So right now I have most of my weight in the ball of my foot and I don't know, I don't know where my leg should go, but I don't think this looks like sitting. I don't feel I'm sitting in my hip. My weight is over the ball of my foot. I can easily go up in a releve if needed, but I'm not creating an angle I don't see the angle. This, this looks centered and my weight is in the ball of my foot. It would look like sitting if I did this. If I just relaxed and sat down. And also, when I sit, I also lost the engagement around my knee. And sitting automatically put my weight in my heel. So if you're in the ball of your foot, and you're engaging these muscles and you're getting this rotation and activation and you're getting this like support from your butt cheeks underneath and you are like lifting out of your hips, it should not appear like, it should not appear like you're sitting in the hip. If it looks like you're sitting in the hip, that means you're probably relaxing the knee and you're like actively pitching from the hip. Shifting the weight over the standing leg does not mean pitching the hip to do it. There is a good exercise to help you work on this. It forces you to shift your weight, but it also helps you uh, practice making that shift invisible. Teachers call it the 88442211, and it's basically eight jetés with one leg, eight jetés with the other leg, and then four and I'm not actually doing four, but then it gets to a point where you're doing one, 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 one. And there is an invisible shift, but you have to disguise it a little bit. And I think what would help, instead of thinking of shifting your upper body over your ball of your foot, Think of the ball of the foot coming under you. And it makes the shift a little more invisible. So instead of sitting in the hip, you know, this is what sitting in the hip looks like. And when you sit in the hip like this, as I said before, your weight naturally goes into the heel and the knee relaxes. So if you're lifting up these, these proper muscles, 
and always fighting for that rotation, then the knee naturally lifts and the heel naturally wants to pivot forward. And it's hard for your heel to pivot forward if your weight is in your heel. It's similar to a promenade, how the heel takes you forward, but then you express this concern about putting a little bit of the weight in the heel and then it feels like you're breaking the rules. That's not breaking the rules. You can't have 100% of your weight in the ball of your foot 100% of the time. You do need your heel as a form of stabilization. If we were always like this, first of all, we would probably fatigue our calves. We would get some very tense quads. You do need the heel down. Having the heel down allows a full stretch of the hamstring and the Achilles tendon, which is important for when we start doing anything with a plie or a jump. So putting the heel down to feel stable is, is fine. That's 100% correct. And then also it looks like you tip the hip of the working side to help you feel stable. Okay, so tilting the hips gets really murky because some methods don't want you tilting the hips. Even when you're trying to get your leg up into like some kind of high position, they still want the hips to be level. But in the Vaganova method, once you get, once you reach passe and start going above that, then they do allow a tilt of the hips. And as I said before, sometimes anatomically, you have to. Like, I have a very low acetabulum, and if I were to try to keep my hips level, my femur would just bump right into it, you know? So I do have to tilt if I want that extension. But the tilting of the hips does not have to come at the, the sacrifice of the look of the standing leg, and it doesn't have to look like sitting. You just kind of have to think about it a little different. So for example, let's say I'm doing a developé. I'm not warmed up, it's not going to be super high, but if we're doing a developé, a lot of people's instinct is to shift and like lean over, and that is when you start to get that sitting feeling. Once you lean over from here, you like teeter from the hip and allow the torso to go, that is when you lose the lifted pulling up out of the ball of the foot. That's when you lose the engagement of the knee. That's when you start to sit. When you think of leaning from the hips, what it should really be is if you watched my single leg balance video, I talk a lot about how the butt and the rotation is always coming under you. You know, it should almost feel like you're grabbing your own butt cheeks and bringing them forward. Even when you're on one leg, those two butt cheeks at the same time, even if you're on one leg, those two butt cheeks are always trying to like come through here, come through the center. It's like wiping back to front. So my weight is currently in the ball of my foot. I can releve at any time. Um, so I'm bringing my leg up, bringing my leg up. And now we get to the highest point where if we wanna go higher, we have to do something here with the hips, right? So instead of tilting from here, Instead of this letting go feeling and like losing all this engagement, you see how that happens, right? Like right here, my knee is engaged, my butt is able to rotate, but once I let go, that kneecap muscle relaxes. So instead of imagining a tilt or a tip or a teeter, like a seesaw, it's less of a tilt because when you, when you start to think of it as leaning, then those butt cheeks kind of come apart. And then we're kind of open here, right? When we start to lean this way, it separates all of that turn out, butt squeezy feeling that we've been fighting for. So instead of opening this whole area, you have to imagine that you know, those rotators, those butt cheeks, like trying to be under you and stay under you and lift you up, like 
They need to go somewhere. That energy has to go somewhere. So instead of opening, it's closed, but now it's pushing. It makes more sense to feel like it's pushing up the leg rather than sitting down on the foot and you just trying with all your might to get your leg in the air somehow. So it's more like this butt cheek is pushing this one up rather than relying on a hinge to get the leg up. And again, the, the lifting of the hip, the you kind of push in here. It's not a sit, it's a push from here. This really only happens when the leg goes above 90 degrees. If the leg is below 90 degrees, there's no reason to push this. Then that's where you'll get that lifted hip look and it starts to look a little strange. It's a cramp in the butt muscle. It really is, like I say this in a lot of videos, butt is everything, but it really is. Your butt is the anchor. Your butt is what makes it possible to turn out and keep these muscles engaged and lifted and keep the weight in the ball of your foot. Your butt muscle is the thing that wants to push the leg up rather than trying to like sneak around with gravity and lean over and see if there's a way you can just awkwardly balance there. It's not about separating the pelvis. It's not about opening the butt cheeks. It's about keeping the butt cheeks together, but using them to like push against each other to keep your leg where you want it. So even though you are putting a little bit of weight in your heel, the fact that you are still stable and not teetering towards your heel I think that means you found like a good sweet spot. You know, you're using the ball of your foot, you're preparing yourself to potentially go on releve if you need to, but you know, a little bit of weight in the heel is necessary. If you had too much weight in your heel, then you would start teetering towards your heel or, you know, away from the standing leg. So the fact that you're not doing that, I think is a sign that you're, you're doing the right thing. And, you know, I can't see what your body is doing, but if all your teachers seem to be satisfied with it, I think you are actually doing all the right things, but maybe the way you were taught to think about those corrections makes you feel like you're breaking the rules. But to me, it doesn't sound like you're breaking the rules. It sounds like you're following the rules and using them to achieve stability. All that being said, I think another thing that confuses us is how we think about weight. When we say put the weight in the ball of the foot, we imagine like placing the weight, like putting it down, placing the weight down and letting it rest over the ball of the foot. And it's really not about resting or placing or putting it down at all. It's more about where are you pushing from? Where are you working from? So to say that your weight is in the ball of the foot should not mean that you just put it down and it rests there. It should mean the ball of your foot is the point of contact that's ready to push up and do the work. So while your heel is on the ground and while your weight should be pretty evenly distributed between three points of your foot, you should never be back in your heels because that loses all your muscle engagement and activation. And you should always be prepared to go up in releve. The ball of the foot must always be responsible for enough of your weight to push you up into releve if you need it. It's not placing your weight down on the ball of your foot. It's the ball of your foot taking the weight and pushing it up for you. So I know it's been three years since you left this comment. Maybe you kind of figured it out for yourself or gotten your answers from elsewhere right now. But a lot of these concerns seem to be kind of for nothing. The way you're explaining your, your methods, it sounds like you're doing everything right. And just for fun, I found a little video of the Vaganova students doing some dégagé and passe balances in the center. If you watch even just like the first six minutes of it, you can kind of see how 
They are always prepared to go in releve. The instinct is to be prepared to go up on the toes. They almost never sit in the heels. They're always like pushing with the ball of their foot. And I know they are in the center, they are doing center combinations, but those same things should apply at the bar. You should not be working two different ways in the center and at the bar. Hopefully, just giving you a different way to think about placement on one foot and lifting a leg, uh, hopefully just giving you a different way to think about it helps a little bit, and maybe you can still continue seeing improvement even after watching this video. So thank you so much for watching, everybody, and stay salty. Oh, and by the way, I am still collecting topics for Salty Sunday. If you go to the little tab that says community and you can see a community post I made, I am taking topics and requests to discuss on Salty Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, which is February 27th. So if you have anything that you're dying to talk about, let me know. See you then.